Hey there, so today we have another review. This is a beer from the brewery. This is a collaboration between Moxa uh, Microphone and the brewery. This is the Reese Company, so this is a pastry stout. 11.3% imperial stout with coconut, vanilla bean, milk sugar, and oat milk. This is a really fun one. This is actually courtesy of Scott. So we actually did a class today, and really fun. We did some uh, blind tasting. Uh, we did, you know, blind beer, get four options, choose a style. I got four out of five correct. A little bit disappointed, I feel like I should maybe got a five out of five. And then um, this specifically was a beer that we, uh, you know, used to do uh, technical descriptors on, which I had a hard time on, you know, you know I'm going to do a review on this beer, but it's sort of a little hard to, you know, think about uh, technical descriptors on this one. I think it, it's, it's very much about framing your mind. And, you know, obviously I could do that and, you know, got into sort of sense of what it's like. But then uh, we actually had with us Brian Reed, Master Cicerone, and absolutely crazy <laughs> to see how he's able to do it. But then again, I think with practice, it's very reasonable, but to see him sort of um, use, uh, you know, turn on his, uh, you know, Cicerone brain and like, you know, really use the technical uh, descriptors for this beer. But I'm going to do just a straight beer review for you guys. So, the beer is beautifully pitch black, has a really beautiful, fluffy, uh, dark tan head to it. You know, honestly, like sort of like a mocha brown um, head to it. Cappuccino, uh, cappuccino uh, frothy, uh, tiny bubble, just lasting, lingering, lingering, lingering. Um, clarity, like completely opaque. I don't think you can see anything through the light. It's a pitch black beer. Uh, pitch black beer. Initially, um, actually initial on the nose, I was getting a pastry thing, so I almost thought it was like um, 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 nutty and almost leaned towards um, peanut butter. But it's that really intense vanilla note that gets you really desserty. So when you get desserty, you all, all of a sudden start thinking of other desserts. But this one specifically is just straight coconut. It's almost like a little bit suntan lotion-y, tons of just mountains bars for days, right? The shaved coconut, it's just like a coconut milkshake. It is... Um, oh, what, what, what's on those? Uh, yeah, the macaroons, macaroons, mac chocolate macaroons. So, so the cookie is now not a white cookie, but a chocolate one, and then like uh, shaved coconut all over it. Girl Scout cookies. What is that? Um, you guys know which one? The the the, the coconut one. <laughs> one of the favorite ones. Yeah, I, I forget the names. I, I actually used to seek them out, but uh, the coconut Girl Scout cookie. Go for days. So this beer is very sweet, very thick. It's a straight pastry stout. And honestly, uh, initial impression um, drinking this beer, I didn't think it was that big. I, I thought this beer was maybe 7% at most, which is super dangerous. It's just that much residual sweetness and sludginess is really hiding the alcohol in this one. It really doesn't come up too boozy, roasty, intense. And honestly, the, the warming alcohol should be key, but it's just so thick, chewy, milkshakey, and balanced. Uh, in the sense of it's like rose prof profile, sweetness, coconut. It, it, you know, it's not balanced, but it's it's, over, it's so overly saturatedly sweet, uh, perception-wise and residual sweetness, so you don't really come off like it's roasty and alcohol -y, right? The beer is intense. Um, it has a lot of beautiful roast action to it. It's chocolate milk cordes, um, milkshake, Mounds Bar. Again, and honestly, just... There's no chocolate in here, but what happens with the vanilla and the lactose and the oat milk make this beer with the roast malt combine it to make make it seem like there's a chocolate addition in our blind tasting and descriptors of beer. A lot of people are uh, perceiving a lot of uh, possibly that chocolate was added to this beer. I personally wouldn't have been surprised if chocolate was added to this beer, like cocoa nib or something. It does taste like chocolate was added, but it's just that vanilla, all that sweetness, all that milkiness, plus the roast malt perceives the chocolate. And then so you get chocolate milk, and then you get that coconut on the top. So it's literally sludgy, thick, creamy, luscious. It's like those shaken yellow bottles of Nesquik that are like terrible calorie-wise to drink for you, but like they used to sell them at a vending machine in my school for some reason. And you shake it up, and it's so thick and chewy. And you get a coconut version of that, and it's like Nesquik. And it's also like, you know, chocolate, coconut milkshake. Yeah, very desserty, very tasty. I think it's absolutely fantastic. A great collaboration. Uh, this for me, 96. I mean, it's an impression beer. Uh, you know, uh, somebody was talking about, like everybody was talking about small portions, a little bit that. Um, yeah, 
I think it's also a small portion of beer. It's a flight beer. Um, I'm thinking anywhere from like four to six ounces is a good amount. Like, just don't want any more from that. It's just so big, big, big. 96. Until next time, guys. Cheers. That is The Reach Company. Thank you so much, Scott. Until next time. Cheers.